The defendant, Lewis Edwards, has refused to attend court. He cannot be compelled to attend, either by the use of force or the threat of force. The only remedy is punishment for contempt and to continue in his absence. The Queen and O'Boyle, 1991, 92 Criminal Appeal Reports, 2002. Turning then to the offences. The defendant has pleaded guilty to 120 counts on two indictments, comprising 19 counts contrary to Section 8 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, 13 of which involve penetration, 27 counts contrary to Section 10 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, 13 of which involve penetration and one attempt, 11 counts contrary to Section 12 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, four counts contrary to Section 15A of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, one count contrary to Section 48 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, one count of distribution of Category C indecent images of children contrary to Section 1 of the Protection of Children Act 1978, 14 counts of making Category A indecent images of children contrary to Section 1 of the Protection of Children Act 1978, 13 counts of making Category B indecent images of children contrary to Section 1 of the Protection of Children Act 1978. 15 counts of making Category C indecent images contrary to Section 1 of the Protection of Children Act 1978. 10 counts of possession of Category A indecent images of children contrary to Section 160 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988. 11 counts of possession of Category B indecent images of children contrary to Section 160 of the Criminal Justice Act, 1988. 12 counts of possession of Category C indecent images of children, contrary to 160 of the Criminal Justice Act, 1988. 22 counts of blackmail, contrary to Section 21 of the Theft Act, 1968. And one offence of failing to comply with the Section 49 notice to disclose the key to protected information, contrary to Section 53 of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000, which was committed for sentence. Count 50 on Indictment 2 has been pleaded incorrectly. That has been adjourned to a later date to be corrected and sentenced. There is no need to adjourn sentence on the remaining counts. Although the defendant is to be sentenced for many offences, the circumstances can be dealt with succinctly. The offences have been opened in detail by prosecuting counsel, and I don't intend to deal with each offence in detail again. At about 7.15 in the morning of Wednesday the 8th of February this year, police officers from the South Wales Police Online Investigation Team executed a search warrant at the address in Bridgend where the defendant lived with his parents. Officers found the defendant asleep in bed with two mobile phones next to him. He was arrested on suspicion of possession of indecent images of children, cautioned and made no reply. The property was searched and a number of mobile phones and other electronic devices belonging to the defendant were recovered. The defendant said that he did not want to give the passwords or PIN numbers at that time. When he was later interviewed, he made no comment and refused to provide passwords or PIN numbers to enable the police to examine his devices. Nevertheless, the police were able to examine all but two of the devices seized. The defendant was served with a notice under Section 49 of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000, requiring him to provide the information needed to access those two devices. He failed to comply. The police examination of the devices seized revealed the defendant's very significant offending against a large number of young girls. He had been in online contact with 210 girls in age from 10 to 16 years. The defendant had a pattern of behaviour. He made online contact with a girl, sometimes pretending to be someone that she knew, sometimes making contact through friends of friends. The defendant pretended to be a boy of similar age. He groomed his victims, psychologically manipulating them until he had gained control over them. He would often be friendly and complimentary, pretending an interest in his victims and their lives, gaining their trust and building relationships with them, continuing to pretend to be a teenage boy. Often, he gained the victim's sympathy 
by claiming that contact with her helped his well-being. Once he had groomed his victims sufficiently to gain control over them, he pressured them to send him indecent images and to engage in sexual behaviour for him to view remotely. He threatened serious violence against some of the victims and their families. Under his control, groomed and subject to psychological pressure, and often fearful for their own safety and that of their families, his victims would comply usually in the hope that the defendant would then leave them alone. However, as he intended all along, the defendant then had the victims trapped. He had recorded and retained images of the sexual acts that his victims had been forced to perform. He threatened to disclose the images via social media to force the victims to do what he wanted, although the only images that he in fact distributed with two Class C images of one victim that he sent to her friend. He threatened and forced his victims to perform more and more extreme sexual acts. He directed them in detail on what they had to do for his sexual gratification. He made them perform sexually for him. Uh, step back from uh, that for a moment uh, due to some uh, uh, un abuse material by an organization called Snap God. This is a global network of offenders who have obtained child sexual abuse material by blackmail or various other means, and which is then sold via the Telegram application. The defendant made some of his victims write the word Snap God across their breasts for him. When his victims did not comply with his orders, he would threaten them until they did as they were told. Even when his victims were crying, distressed, begging him to stop, even when told that the victim was self-harming or suicidal, the defendant did not stop. Although he could have been in no doubt about the immense harm that he was causing to his victims. Apart from the offences against the first victim, Throughout the time when the defendant was committing these offences, he was a serving officer with South Wales Police. On 30 dates, he had incoming contact from his victims during working hours, and he also committed some of these offences when he had protected work time to study for his degree. He even had direct contact with the victim of Count 25 on indictment 2 in the course of his official duties shortly before he first made contact with her. However, the defendant did not use his position as a police officer in order to commit these offences. Victim personal statements have been read to the court. There is no need to repeat them, but they have all been taken into account. It is clear from the statements that the defendant caused his victims very significant harm. That harm extends to the victim's parents, siblings and wider families. It is important that everyone, particularly the victims and their families, understands that they have done nothing wrong. They bear no blame and no responsibility. The blame and the responsibility for this offending is the defendants and the defendants alone. The defendant is now 23 years old and he has no convictions, cautions or reprimands. I turn then to the sentencing guidelines. I take into account the sentencing guideline on the imposition of community and custodial sentences. Obviously, this offending is so serious that only an immediate custodial sentence is appropriate. Applying the sentencing guideline on reduction in sentence for a guilty plea, the defendant is entitled to the full one-third discount on all offences, as he indicated at the earliest opportunity that he would plead guilty to all offences. Given the contents of the pre-sentence report, I have considered the sentencing guideline on sentencing offenders with mental disorders, developmental disorders or neurological impairments. I am satisfied that the defendant's culpability is not affected by the mental health problems from which the defendant says that he suffers. I take into account the sentencing guideline on totality. 
on all of the offences contrary to Section 8 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003 involving penetration, I will pass concurrent sentences which will reflect the defendant's overall offending. I will pass concurrent determinate sentences for all other offences. This is not an indication that the sentences on the other offences are any less important. It is simply a matter of how the sentences are structured. For all offences in any sentencing guideline, the recommended starting point is for a single offence before allowing for any aggravating or mitigating features and before applying the reduction in sentence for the guilty pleas. However, as both prosecution and defence counsel recognise, the scale of the offending is such that sentence moves outside the guidelines. Dealing first with the offence of causing or inciting a child under 13 to engage in sexual activity, contrary to Section 8 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003. The maximum, pe maximum penalty is life imprisonment if penetration is involved, if not 14 years imprisonment. I will categorise the offences involving penetration first. There are a number of Category 2 factors present. Severe psychological There are a number of Category 2 factors present. Severe psychological We are going to step out of that uh, uh, sentencing with uh, Her Honour Tracy Lloyd Clark because of some distressing content once again. Uh, thankfully, brief distressing content, and we can return now. Two factors, or the statements. I'm satisfied that the harm is elevated into Category 1. The defendant's culpability falls in Category A as grooming behaviour was used against the victims and sexual images of the victims were recorded, retained or solicited. The recommended starting point for a single Category 1A offence is 13 years custody with a range from 11 to 17 years. For the offences not involving penetration, the harm falls into Category 3 because there are no Category 1 or Category 2 factors. Culpability remains in Category A. The starting point for a single Category 3A offence is five years custody, with a range from three to eight years custody. Causing or inciting a child to engage in sexual activity, contrary to Section 10 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, maximum penalty is 14 years imprisonment. The offences involving penetration are Category 1 harm. The defendant's culpability is Category A, because grooming behaviour was used against the victims. Sexual images of the victims were recorded, retained and solicited, and the defendant lied about his age. The re recommended starting point in the guideline for a single Category 1A offence is five years custody with a range of four to ten years. For offences not involving penetration, the harm falls in Category 2 because the offences involve touching and or exposure of naked genitalia or naked breasts by the victim. The recommended starting point for a single 2A offence is three years custody with a range of two to six years custody. The harm involved in counts 43 and 58 on Indictment 1 and count 35 on Indictment 2 falls into Category 3 because there are no Category 1 or 2 factors. Culpability is Category A as before. The recommended starting point for a single 3A offence is 26 weeks custody with a range from a high-level community order up to three years custody. A small reduction will be made on count 35 on Indictment 2 to reflect the fact that it is an attempt. Causing a child to watch a sexual act contrary to Section 12 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, maximum penalty 10 years. The harm falls in Category 1. Three, maximum penalty 10 years. The harm falls in Category 1. Once again, we are going to step out of that for a moment. Could be for legal reasons or distressing content, and we will return to it. Uh, and her honour, Tracy Lloyd Clark. Now, after trial is four years custody, the range is three to six years. Sexual culpability falls in category B because there are no category A factors. The recommended starting point for a single 2B offence is six months custody, with a range from a medium level community order to one year custody. Causing or inciting child sexual exploitation, contrary to Section 48 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003, maximum penalty 14 years. This is Category 1 harm, as the victim was involved in penetrative sexual activity. The culpability is Category B, as the defendant had close involvement with inciting, controlling, arranging or facilitating the sexual exploitation of a child. 
The starting point sentence for a single 1B offence when the child was aged 16 years is four years custody with a range of three to seven years custody. Distributing indecent images of children contrary to section one of the Protection of Children Act 1978, maximum penalty 10 years. Count 46. The starting point sentence for distribution of a single category C image is 13 weeks custody with a sentence range from a high-level community order up to 26 weeks custody. Making indecent images of children, contrary to Section 1 of the Protection of Children Act 1978, maximum penalty 10 years. The sentencing guideline states that production includes the taking or making of any image at source. For instance, the original image. Making an image by simple downloading should be treated as possession for the purposes of sentencing. These are images that were made by the defendant when he recorded what his victims were doing. He made the image at source, and so these offences fall into the category of production. For a single category A offence, the starting point is six years custody, with a range of four to nine years custody. For production of category B images, the starting point is two years custody, with a range of one to four years custody. For production of category C images, the starting point is 18 months custody, with a range of one to three years custody. Possessing indecent images of children, contrary to section 160 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988, maximum penalty of five years. The starting point sentence for a single category A image is one year custody with a range of 26 weeks to three years custody. For a category B image, the starting point is 26 weeks custody with a range from a high level community order to 18 months custody. For a category C image, the starting point is a high level community order with a range from a medium level community order to 26 weeks custody. Blackmail, contrary to Section 21 of the Theft Act 1968, maximum penalty 14 years imprisonment. There are no sentencing guidelines for the offence of blackmail. There are few authorities on this type of blackmail, and there are very little assistance in this case, as each case is fact-specific and the range of factual circumstances is vast. Authorities on sentence for this type of blackmail against child victims and on this scale. I have considered the general sentencing guideline on overarching principles. I take account of the type of material demanded, the nature of the menaces, the age and vulnerability of the victims, the time over which the unlawful conduct persisted, and the harm caused to the victims. I am satisfied that this is a case of high culpability because the defender's conduct was deliberate, persistent, for his sexual gratification and against child victims a high level of harm was caused. Failure to comply with the regulate, Regulation of Investigatory Powers Notice contrary to Section 53 of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000. There is no sentencing guideline for this offence. I have considered the general sentencing guideline on overarching principles. The defendant's culpability is high, as this was a deliberate refusal intended to prevent further investigation. The harm or potential harm is high, as the defendant has succeeded in preventing the police from investigating those two devices. Overall, the offending is aggravated by the period of time over which these offences were committed, the number of victims, the number of images, almost all of which were moving images, and the fact that the defendant was a serving police officer. In mitigation, the defendant is said to have some mental health problems, but I am satisfied that they are not sufficient to reduce his culpability. He is still only 23 years old, and he lacks maturity for his age, but the scale and nature of the offending means that there is no reduction to be made because of his age. He has no previous convictions, although in the context of this case, that is not a factor that carries any great weight. I have considered carefully the submission that the defendant is remorseful, Remorse is different from pleading guilty. The defendant has said to the probation officer that he is extremely sorry for his actions, but he continues to minimise his offending behaviour, which limits the mitigating effect. I take into account all the contents of the pre-sentence report, all the information that I have about the defendant, and Ms Ferrier's realistic submissions and mitigation, which have been eloquent and succinct, and yet said everything that could be said on the defendant's behalf. These are extremely serious offences, and the defendant was a prolific offender. 
He has caused significant harm to the victims, to their parents, their siblings and their wider families. It is clear that he not only gained sexual gratification from his offending, but that he also enjoyed the power and control that he had over these young girls. His reaction to their distress can properly be described as cruel and sadistic. His offending is significantly aggravated by the fact that he was a serving police officer. Many of his victims and their families have said that his actions have caused them to lose trust in the police. There is no doubt that he has caused significant harm to the reputation of South Wales Police and to policing generally. But it should also be borne in mind that it was officers from South Wales Police who investigated this case and brought this defendant to justice and who continue to work hard to identify and help further victims. The offences contrary to sections 8, 10, 12, 15a and 48 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003 are specified offences for the purposes of sections 266 and 279 of the Sentencing Code. And so I must consider the issue of dangerousness. I am satisfied that there is a significant risk that the defendant will commit further specified offences and that by doing so he will cause serious physical or psychological harm to another. I have come to that decision because of, one, the nature and circumstances and scale of his offending, which included sadistic enjoyment of his victim's distress, as well as the sexual enjoyment that he gained from his offending. Two, the fact that he suggested meeting some of the victims in order to have sex. And three, the contents of the pre-sentence report. And in particular, the fact that the probation officer has assessed the defendant as presenting a very high risk of serious harm towards children, an assessment with which I agree. Having found the defendant dangerous, I must then go on to consider whether the seriousness of these offences justifies a li discretionary life sentence pursuant to section 285 of the Sentencing Act 2020 for the section 8 offences involving penetration. I have considered what was said by the Court of Appeal Criminal Division in the Attorney General's reference number 27 of 2013, the Queen and Berinskus 2014 EWCA Crim 334. The Court said, taking into account the law prior to coming into force of the 2003 Act and the whole of the new statutory provisions, uh, the question as to whether or not the seriousness of the offence or of the offence and one or more offences associated with it was such as to justify a life sentence required consideration of one, the seriousness of the offence itself on its own or with other offences associated with it in accordance with the provisions of section 143, which was always a matter for the judgment of the court. Two, the defendant's previous convictions in accordance with section 143 subsection two. Three, the level of danger to the public posed by the defendant and whether or not there is a reliable estimate of the length of time he would remain a danger, and for the available alternative sentences. It was inevitable, said the court, that the application of section 225 in its current form would lead to the imposition of life sentences in circumstances where previously the sentence would have been one of imprisonment for public protection. It was what Parliament had intended and also ensured, as Parliament had also intended, so far as was possible, the effective protection of the public. I bear in mind that a life sentence is a sentence of last resort. I am satisfied that a life sentence is appropriate because of the seriousness of these offences and the other offences associated with them. The level of danger posed to children by the defendant is very high. I am satisfied that that risk will continue long into the future and it is not possible to say when that risk will cease. I have considered the available alternative sentences which would be a determinate sentence or an extended sentence. But I am satisfied that neither would be appropriate because of the defendant's continuing very high risk and the impossibility of assessing when that risk will or might cease. Therefore, on counts 33, 34 and 85 on indictment 1 and on counts 6, 15, 17, 21, 26, 30, 31, 32, 33 and 43 on indictment 2, I impose sentences of life imprisonment pursuant to section 285 of the Sentencing Act 2020. As to the minimum which must be served, if I had been sentencing the defendant to a determinate sentence, 
and taking account of all the aggravating and mitigating factors and reflecting the overall offending, I would have sentenced the defendant on each of those counts to concurrent terms of 27 years imprisonment. Allowing the defendant the full one-third credit to which he is entitled for his guilty pleas reduces that sentence to 18 years concurrent on each of those counts. As the defendant would have served up to two-thirds of that, that sentence in custody, I fix the minimum term on each of those counts, which he must serve concurrently, at two-thirds of 18 years, that is, 12 years imprisonment. The time that the defendant has spent in custody on remand is not automatically deducted from this sentence by the prison authorities. Any time that would have been automatically deducted, had this not been a life sentence, should be deducted now. And so I reduce those minimum terms by the 197 days that the defendant has spent on remand in custody. Any error in the calculation of the number of days on remand can be corrected administratively. This means that the minimum term that the defendant must serve before the parole board may consider his possible release is one of 12 years. It is very important that the defendant and everyone concerned with this sentence should understand what this sentence means. It is a life sentence. The minimum term is not a fixed term after which the defendant will automatically be released. It is the term that must be served before the parole board can undertake the first review of the case. The parole board will review the risk that the defendant then presents and will consider whether the, the defendant can properly be released from custody subject to licence at that stage and if so, on what terms. If and when the defendant is released, he will be subject to licence and that will remain the case for the rest of his life. If for any reason his licence is revoked, he will be recalled to prison to continue to serve his life sentence in custody. It follows that unless and until the parole board considers that his release is appropriate, the defendant will remain in custody. For the remaining counts, the sentences are as follows. The Section 8 Sexual Offences Act 2003, not involving penetration, on Indictment 1, Counts 11, 12, 32, 84 and 92, and on Indictment 2, Count 45, after trial, the sentence would have been 14 years imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third of the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is nine years, four months concurrent. For the offence is contrary to Section 10 of the same Act on Indictment 1, Counts 2, 22, 60, 67, 77 and 100, and on Indictment 2, Counts 9, 19, 23, 28, 38, 39 and 41. After trial, the sentence would have been 14 years imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third of the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is nine years, four months imprisonment concurrent. For the offences, contrary to Section 10 of the same Act, not involving penetration, that is on Indictment 1, counts 6, 20, 21, 42, 50 and 76, and on indictment 2, counts 1, 5, 25, 34 and 36. After trial, the sentence would have been 14 years imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third for the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is nine years, four months concurrent. On indictment 1, on counts 43 and 58, after trial, the sentence would have been four years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third of the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is two years and eight months. On indictment two, count 35, after trial, the sentence would have been three years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third of the guilty pleas. The sentence is two years' imprisonment concurrent. For the offence is contrary to section 12 of the same Act, on indictment 1, counts 13, 23, 59, 68 and 93. And on indictment 2, counts 2, 3, 7, 12, 13 and 20. After trial, the sentence would have been nine years imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one third for the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is six years imprisonment concurrent. For the offence is contrary to section 15A of the same Act. On indictment 1, counts 10, 19, 31 and 86. After trial, the sentence would have been one year, nine months imprisonment on each count concurrent. Allowing a discount of one third for the guilty pleas, the sentence on each count is one year, two months imprisonment concurrent. 
for the offence contrary to section 48 of the same Act, which is count 11 on indictment 2. After trial, the sentence would be four years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third for the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is two years' eight months' imprisonment concurrent. For the offences of distributing Category C photographs on Indictment 1, Count 46, after trial the sentence would be in one year imprisonment concurrent, allowing a discount of one third for the guilty pleas, the sentence is eight months imprisonment concurrent. For the offences of making Category A phot photographs on Indictment 1, Counts 3, 24, 35, 51, 61, 69, 78, 87, 94, and 101, and on counts, sorry, on indictment 2, counts 46, 49, and 52. After trial, the sentence would have been nine years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one third of the guilty pleas. The sentence on each of those counts is six years' imprisonment concurrent. For the offences of making category B photographs, on indictment 1, counts 4, 14, 25, 36, 44, 52, 62, 70, 79, 95 and 102, and on indictment 2, counts 47 and 53. After trial, the sentence would have been five years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third of the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is three years, four months' imprisonment concurrent. For making Category C photographs, on indictment 1, counts 5, 15, 26, 37, 45, 53, 63, 71, 80, 88, 96 and 103, and on indictment 2, counts 48, 51 and 54. After trial, the sentence would have been three years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third of the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is two years' imprisonment concurrent. For possession of the Category A photographs, on indictment 1, counts 7, 28, 38, 54, 64, 72, 81, 89, 97 and 104. After trial, the sentence would have been five years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, Allowing a discount of one third of the guilty pleas, the sentence on each count is three years, four months imprisonment concurrent. For possession of Category B photographs, on indictment, five years imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one third of the guilty pleas, the sentence on each count is three years, four months imprisonment concurrent. For possession of Category B photographs, on indictment one, counts 8, 16, 27, 39, 47, 55, 65, 73, 82, 98, and 105. After trial, the sentence would have been four years' imprisonment on each count concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third for the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is two years, eight months' imprisonment concurrent. For possession of the Category C photographs, on indictment 1, counts 9, 17, 29, 40, 48, 56, 66, 74, 83, 90, 99 and 106. After trial, the sentence would have been three years' imprisonment on each count concurrent. Allowing a discount of one-third for the guilty pleas, the sentence on each count is two years' imprisonment concurrent. For the offences of blackmail, on indictment 1, counts 1, 18, 13, 41, 49, 57, 75 and 91. And on indictment 2, counts 4, 8, 10, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24, 27, 29, 37, 40, 42 and 44. After trial, the sentence would have been 14 years imprisonment on each count concurrent allowing a discount of one-third for the guilty pleas. The sentence on each count is nine years, four months imprisonment concurrent. For the offence contrary to section 53 of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000, which was committed for sentence, after trial the sentence would have been three years imprisonment on uh, three years imprisonment concurrent, allowing a discount of one-third for the guilty pleas the sentence is two years imprisonment concurrent. Pursuant to section 152 of the Sentencing Act 2020, I make an order for forfeiture of the items set out in the application on DCS at Q21. I certify that the defendant has been convicted of a sexual offence so that he must, for the rest of his life, keep the police informed at all times of his personal particulars, the address at which he is living and any alteration in the name that he is using. 
The defendant will be provided with full details of these requirements on a form after this hearing. The offences of which the defendant has been convicted are ones which will make him subject to barring from working with children or other vulnerable persons. He will be told of the restrictions under the Safeguarding Vulnerable Groups Act 2006 by the Disclosure and Barring Service. The prosecution application for a sexual harm prevention order is on the digital case system at document Q8. I am satisfied that the making of such an order is necessary to protect others from sexual harm caused by the commission of further scheduled offences by the defendant. I have considered the terms of the proposed order. They are not oppressive, they are proportionate, and they are in clear terms and capable of being understood by the defendant without recourse to legal advice. I make the order in the terms set out in the draft uploaded by the prosecution at Q8. I am satisfied that this is one of the rare occasions where such an order should continue indefinitely. Breach of the registration requirements or of the sexual harm prevention order is a separate offence for which the defendant can be sent to prison. The maximum penalty is five years. If the statutory surcharge applies in this case, the order can be drawn up in the appropriate amount and is to be paid within six months. Any error in that order can be corrected administratively, as can any error in the collection order that I also make. Given the sentence that has been passed, it is not necessary to deal with the defendant's contempt. I direct the copies of my sentencing remarks are to go to the probation service and to the prison service to be placed on his file for any future parole hearing. Finally, many of the victims and their families have been present today and at earlier hearings. I thank them all for their patience and for the dignity and forbearance that they have shown as they have had to listen to the awful details of these offences. Well, that was uh, Her Honour Tracy Lloyd Clark at uh, Cardiff Crown Court uh, issuing a life sentence uh, to the former South Wales police officer Lewis Edwards and making clear that he must serve a minimum term of 12 years. Of course, as a reminder, Lewis Edwards was found guilty of grooming girls online and blackmailing them into sending him pictures of themselves carrying out sexual acts. Let's bring you some uh, uh, more of the comments there from uh, uh, Her Honour Tracy Lloyd-Clark through it. In, in terms of issuing the life sentence, she said, the level of danger posed by the defendants is very high and will persist uh, for a very long time. That uh, was in large part her justification of uh, the life sentence. This, by the way, is uh, a fresh picture only just released uh, of uh, the defendant, uh, the former South Wales police officer, um, Lewis Edwards. Let's bring you some more of the comments uh, uh, during that. It, it was confirmed uh, that uh, Edwards, who was 24, incited more than 200 young girls aged between 10 to 16 to send him degrading pictures and videos on Snapchat. Uh, the judge saying that he enjoyed the power and control he had over the girls uh, and he was uh, had a sadistic enjoyment from the victim's distress as well as his own um, sexual uh, enjoyment. Uh, he said, she said the defendant had a pattern of behaviour. He made online contacts uh, with a girl, uh, pretended to be a boy of similar age, groomed the victims psychologically, manipulating them until he'd gained control. And when his victims did not comply, he would threaten them until they did uh, what they were told. Uh, and he said that the, uh, his abuse uh, continued even when the girls were crying, distressed, uh, and disclosed to him that they had self-harmed. Um, as I mentioned earlier, she used the phrase sadistic enjoyment, uh, uh, described him as a prolific offender, uh, and uh, said he caused significant harm to the victims, their parents, their siblings, and uh, wider families. Uh, just to mention as well, I should have mentioned at the top, Lewis Edwards was not in court, uh, and the judge mentioned at the top that uh, she could not force him uh, to... Uh, attend. Well, following that sentencing, uh, we can now hear from the Assistant Chief Constable of South Wales Police, Daniel Richards. The crimes committed by Lewis Edwards are despicable and the public will be as shocked and sickened as we are that such appalling offences were committed by a police officer. As soon as we knew that the suspect was a serving officer, Lewis Edwards was suspended and sacked at a misconduct hearing which was held at the very earliest opportunity to remove him from the service. 
His behaviour only serves to damage the public's trust and confidence in policing and undermines the work of responsible, hard-working police officers who serve the communities of South Wales with courage and pride. There is no place in South Wales Police for anyone who abuses the personal responsibility that they hold as a police officer or member of staff. I understand there will be people asking how Edwards could have joined the police at the same time he was committing these terrible crimes. At the time of him joining South Wales Police, his vetting was clear and there was nothing to indicate that he was involved in such abhorrent offences against children. Our number one priority is to protect the public, so if anyone has any information about the safety of young or vulnerable people, or those who pose a risk in our society, then I urge them to come forward and report it to us. I am grateful for the work of our investigation team who have brought Edwards to justice and ensured his victims have been protected from further abuse. That was Assistant Chief Constable uh, of the South Wales Police, uh, Daniel Richard. A fresh comment from him after we just heard uh, Her Honour Tracy Lloyd Clark hand down uh, to the former South Wales Police Officer Lewis Edwards uh, a full life sentence uh, and uh, a minimum term of 12 years uh, for grooming girls and blackmailing them into sending him pictures of themselves carrying out sexual acts. You're watching Sky News today. Coming up, uh, we will return to Card Cardiff Crown Court for a live uh, report from our correspondent who is inside that sentencing and has been following the story very closely. We'll be right back. Whatever is going on, it is in our airspace. It's being seen by military pilots, tracked on radar, filmed on forward-looking infrared uh, videos. So, so we need some answers because it, whether this is China, Russia or something else, there is a recognition, certainly in the United States, that this is a defense, national security and flight safety concern. And the Office of the Director of National Intelligence in the United States has issued a couple of reports. And they say, look, there's likely not one single answer to this. There may be a lot of things going on concurrently. And, and yeah, absolutely, adversarial technology is a possibility. But neither has the extraterrestrial um, hypothesis been ruled out. It's still being considered. NASA are now studying this seriously. We can ramp up the, the effort in the, U, the UK, just as is going on in the US. We have space tracking. has said on Telegram that on uh, Telegram, Telegram, excuse me, on October the 25th, uh, its leader Hassan Nasrallah had met with senior figures from Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Beirut to discuss what uh, must be done to achieve a real victory for the resistance in Gaza. Uh, and a photo uh, shows this meeting uh, taking uh, place. Uh, and that's uh, really the key development here, a, a kind of evidential photograph, which we will bring you a bit later. Um, and the leaders uh, apparently, quote, agreed to continue coordination and, quote, follow up on developments on a daily and permanent uh, basis. The other development uh, from Israel and Hamas says the Israeli military have uh, sounded sirens in northern Carmel region, warning of possible incoming uh, rockets. Uh, and so those sirens have been sounding in that particular region uh, over the course of this morning. 
Now, well, we are going to re return now to uh, Cardiff Crown Court, uh, of course, where we've just been uh, listening to the sentencing of the uh, former South Wales police officer, Lewis Edwards. Let's go to Shaman Freeman Powell, who's outside the court and was inside for the sentencing to, to bring us really the key takeaways, Shaman. Well, over the past three days, the details and the evidence that we've heard in this sentencing hearing has been harrowing and quite distressing, actually. So distressing that even the prosecutor himself yesterday broke down in tears, listening to some of the evidence from witness statements from girls as young as 10 years old, outlining how Edwards has gro had groomed, threatened and intimidated them into sending indecent sexual images of themselves using the social media platform Snapchat to do so. And during the course of this sentencing hearing over the past three, day, three days, many of the victims' family members were present in court, having to listen to this harrowing detail. However, Edwards himself was not present, as he has so far, well, has refused to attend court for this sentencing hearing. But the judge, though, today, she summarised what she believes Edward had done whilst committing these crimes. She spoke about how Edwards had a pattern of behaviour, making online contact with these girls over Snapchat, sometimes pretending to be someone that they knew before threatening and intimidating them into sending uh, indecent images of them often performing sexual acts. She also then went on to explain that once he had these videos of these young girls between the ages of 10 and 16 years old, he would then use that material to further blackmail them into to send in even more graphic videos and images. She said that even when they were crying and begging him to stop, even when they spoke of the fact that they were experiencing severe mental health issues and some had explained to Edwards that they had started self-harming, she explained that Edwards didn't care. He didn't seem to care that these young girls were distressed and didn't stop his crime. She also went on to explain that whilst the defendant was a serving police officer, but all but for all but one of these counts that he actually posed as a 14-year-old boy to commit these crimes. So he didn't use his power as a police officer to commit these offences. However, she did say it was significantly aggravated by the fact that he was a serving police officer. And she referenced the fact that many of the victims in their witness statements had said the fact that he was an officer had broken their trust with the police. In fact, one 13-year-old girl in a witness statement said you were meant to protect us, not abuse us. An appearance of another victim said how her daughter no longer trusts police, security guards or men in general as a result of what he has done. Now, we had already known that uh, Edwards can no longer serve as a police officer as he's been put on a barred list. But the judge also explained today that he would never be able to work with children or young people. He has been sentenced to prison for life with a minimum term of 12 years. That means that after 12 years he will be able to go to probation but not necessarily released. It's only once probation deem it's safe for him to do so. Shaman, thanks so much for that. Shaman Freeman Power there outside Cardiff Crown Court. Time for a couple of other stories now. Well, a hurricane uh, described this morning as catastrophic has hit Mexico's southern coast bringing winds of up to 165 miles per hour. Otis, as it's been named, was quickly upgraded from a tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane, but within the last hour, Mexico's Civil Protection uh, Authority has downgraded that uh, back to a Category 4. The state government uh, in the area says it's preparing 396 shelters and more than 8,000 troops are being deployed to provide specialised equipment and to aid in rescues. Life-threatening coastal flooding is expected, as well as flash flooding and mudslides on higher land. Uh, the uh, uh, Royal Meteorological Society told Sky News the impact of the hurricane could be high as there uh, wasn't much notice to prepare. We've just had Hurricane Norma that affected uh, Mexico in the last few days, followed very quickly by Otis that's affecting them at the moment. Um, so it is unusual, I think, to see this many uh, in that part of the world. The forecasts have not been particularly good in capturing the intensity of this storm over the last 24 hours or so. So it hasn't been well uh, predicted and therefore the storm warnings for locals has been pretty poor. It's all going to be last minute. We're now going to have a quick look at the weather here. Warm memories wherever you go. To fly, to fly. 
the weather.